the hula hoop remains controversial. <laughs> Keep her by herself for a while. If she makes it through the week, we can transfer her to a ward then. Are you giving odds, Doctor? Keep quiet! What are the odds on if? Quiet. Do you want to go through that whole thing again? It's a sense of waiting. It's a sense of hanging on. I've seen the brown leaves clinging till spring. And then the buds come out, the trees turn green, and the spring winds come. And no matter how hard they clung through the winter, the brown leaves blow away. The Golden Age of Television presents Gene Crane and John Lupton starring in Wait Till Spring after these messages. Del Monte asked three people with a taste for spring. Who's on duty for no admissions tonight? Johnny Bond. I got a tuberculosis case. Looks like a bad one. Johnny Bond, please, honey. B-O-B-R-E-K. Bobrek. Lila Bobrek. Uh, 1225 Barrow. Apartment 4B. Age? 27? That's a guess. Relatives? Calling Dr. Bond. Not known. Dr. Simon. Surgery. Any hemorrhaging? Not yet. Nurse. Don't talk. You're in a hospital. My name is Dr. Bond. This is Nurse Wheeler. Feel weak? A little dizzy? That's temporary. We'll stop that in a little while. By tomorrow morning, you'll feel like a new woman. Help me turn her over, Wheeler. Okay. are involved. Cavities on both sides. Doctor, she's hemorrhaging. Help her sit up. Adrenaline. Oxygen. Breathe. Shall I move her to a ward, Doctor? No, I'll keep her by herself for a while. If she makes it through the week, we can transfer her to a ward then. Are you giving odds, Doctor? Keep quiet! What are the odds on if? Quiet. Do you want to go through that whole thing again? through the winter in the spring. Did you ever notice in the spring when things are growing that the patients do better? Maybe in the spring the sap rises in people too. She's really quite beautiful, isn't she? 
Yes, she is. Listen, you're supposed to eat, you know? You don't get better here unless you eat. That's the second meal you've missed today. Now, I want you to drink your milk at least. Oh, come on now, don't be a child. Miss Bobrick. A glass of eggnog on the tray is for you. Drink it, please. Miss Bobrick, one of the symptoms of tuberculosis is that the patients don't seem to have much of an appetite. We understand that. I didn't ask you to eat because you're hungry. I want you to eat because it's part of your treatment. What is the treatment for? To make you well again. Can you do that, doctor? Yes, I can. I don't think so. If you don't think so, then I can't. And wishing will make it all come true. Supposing that were possible, what would you wish for? Why, to be all bright and new again. My old life's a bit used, Doctor, and not so very nice. What would you wish for? I wish you'd drink that glass of eggnog. All right. All right, I've taken my medicine. Where do I wait for the miracles? In bed, Miss Brobrick. Try and understand something. People get depressed when they're sick. But the way they feel then has nothing to do with reality. Look, give it some time. By spring, we'll build a whole new world for you. Why should I? Because I want you to live. <sighs> That's a very funny thing, Doctor. I don't particularly care whether I live or die. Why should you care? Look, at the end of the day, we make an entry on a chart. We put down the living and those who have died. At the end of the year, that's how a hospital is judged, by the number of people it kept alive. Some patients can't be helped no matter what we do for them. But sometimes a patient like you comes here. The ones like you have a chance if they do the right thing. I've lost track of the right things. We'll find them. For you or for me, doctor? For both of us. Oh, I see. If I die, I go down on your chart like a black mark. If I live, I'm a little gold star on your report card. Why should I give you a gold star? Because it's important to me. Important? We do do things for other people, don't we? Not just for ourselves. You're wishing again, Dr. Bond. May I go now? Yes. Nurse. Oh, Doctor, will you sign this, please? Certainly, Willie. Oh, it seems a shame, Doctor. So few hospital beds. They ought to be for people who need them. You don't think Miss Bobrick needs the treatment? Well, she doesn't want it. It almost amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? No, not the same thing at all. Restless tonight, Doctor. I've been thinking about our talk in the office. So have I. Any conclusions? One, if you really want to help. I do. Then no magic cures, please. Just leave me alone. All right, Miss Bobrick. You can set your mind at ease. No cure at all. Your last days won't be full of nagging and recrimination. I'll try to enjoy them. Good.
Because everybody dies. Thank you, Doctor. Now will you go? In a minute. You know, there's always life in the spring. The fall, it's gone. And another spring. The flowering universe. Go away, please. It's all transient, Lila. That's the big secret. In the end, nothing is missed. <laughs> Lila, what are you crying for? Feel them, their tears. For what? Why? It's awful to be told, even when you know. What do you know? That you don't want to live? Lila, you're crying for life. I don't want to die. Say it again. Wish for it. I don't want to die. You won't, I promise you. But you, you said... Now, I had to say those things. We had to make a beginning. You care what happens to me. You really care. I care. Honest. Honest? Time to put the lights out. Try and get some sleep. Good night, Lila. Good night. The golden age of television will continue in a moment. System. I'll take care of it. Well, I did a little checking around myself, and... A little? I think we should get an Amana. Amana? Do you know where I can get one? Oh, well, not walking around. Go on, back to bed. I'll see what I can find. Oh, thank you. You must have slept well last night. No, I didn't sleep it at all. But it was very nice. What does the tree do in the winter time, I wonder? Does it go to sleep against the cold in its own ugliness? Rests. Gets strong. If I were a tree standing there naked in the winter time, I, I don't think I'd want people looking at me. Once I thought that's why the leaves turned red in the fall. The tree was blushing because it, it knew how soon it would be bare and ugly. You use the word ugly a lot. I used to think I was. But now I... I think I'm kind of pretty. You give that impression. Now let's go down to X-ray and really find out. Look right here. You don't need the comparison, Johnny. Look at the extent of that cavity. That tells the story. Dr. Weiss, look at this inception. Now, this is what we found when we first admitted her. Now, take a look at this second plate. There's a considerable regression. The walling off is almost complete. You're looking at one small area. You're right about that. But in the rest of the lungs, the infection is triumphant. What's the matter, Johnny? You can read a plate. Why don't you want to face the evidence? What do you want me to do? Just, just, just give up? No! No, I want you to face the facts. In this day and age? In this day and age. It's rare. One in a million, a case like this. But it happens, Johnny. A new drug. They bring out new antibiotics every day. You've used streptomycin? Yes. Isonize it? Yes. Johnny, how many times in med school did they tell you not to become involved with a patient on a personal level? I'm not getting involved. Well... I just don't like to lose them, Doctor. I've never liked to lose them. Nobody does, Johnny. We do our best. But we're only human. I'll send up the written report to your office for your record. you feel? Marvelous. You were right about the spring. What's the matter? Mm. Tired, that's all. Even doctors get tired. No wonder you're tired. 
all of your strength is in me. Do you see the color in my cheeks? I'm not wearing makeup. I can tell. I thank you, Dr. Bond. I, I feel alive. Do you like geraniums? Mm-hmm. Blossoms go so quickly, don't they? Would you like to hear a secret? Do you know what the name is on my baptismal certificate? Lilac. I changed it when I grew up. I thought it sounded a little too much like a flower. My father was a miner, you see. Our, our house was always full of flowers. Dr. Bond, I, I have something to tell you. I'm in love with you. I suppose lots of your patients feel that way about you. I, I suppose you've heard that very often. It's not serious, really. No, of course not. It's a natural enough illusion under the circumstances. Yes, this sickness, it, it gets you all out of touch with reality, like you said. Well, we do have our friendship. Of course. I have nothing to do all day but go around making up these little jokes, shocking people. I was telling Mrs. Pissarro only last night that I, that I do this, and I... Lila, I... Lila, listen to me. A doctor and patient, we get so involved with each other. You don't have to keep talking about it, you know. You're always so serious, so serious. Lila. Marry me. The joke's over. Lila, doctors aren't supposed to fall in love here. I've told myself that I couldn't, that I hadn't. I have. Don't say it. If you don't mean it, don't say it, please. Lila, I love you. I've seen you born here as new as you've ever wanted to be. Oh, Johnny. I want us to get married. I, I don't want to wait. Not here, not in the hospital. Yes, here soon. I don't want to take any chances. Chances? That when you get well, you'll leave me. Hi, girls. Hi. Where's the bride? All right, honey. We're going to fix you up like the ever loving end. Well, I didn't order anything from the beauty parlor. It's a present to you from the nurses. Oh. And these things are from us to the doctor's lady. Oh, no, oh, I can't. Good luck, you know. Old, new, borrowed, blue. Oh, I love it. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you all so much. Do you, Lila Bobrek, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? To love, honor, and cherish for richer or for poorer? in sickness and in health, till death do you part? I do. And do you, John Emerson Bond, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, till death do you part? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Tired? A little, just a little. Hi. It's a funny kind of honeymoon. We'll make it up. Can you stay a while? Mm hmm? Fever. A little. It always goes up at night. Well, we have to expect a little fever. Had a pretty busy day. Yes. I was married today. I think I can sleep now. I'm not Miss Bobrick anymore. Isn't that a funny thing? Wake up in the morning, Miss Bobrick, and go to sleep at night, Mrs. Bond. I sent Drummond for the Demerol. Johnny. Forget it. Give us a minute. Thank you. 
with a screen of Johnny. Johnny. I, I don't want to die. I'm, I'm not getting well. Is that why you married me? Because I love you. No. No, oh, it's that theory of yours. Give him something to live for. No, you want You wanted that gold star. I didn't even know whether you'd live another day, but I loved you. I don't know, chemistry, something. I loved you. My life hasn't been very full. I've worked my head off ever since I was a kid. You're the first full thing that's been in my life. I wanted you. You knew how short the time was? Time's always short. Don't feel sorry for me, Johnny. I saw the spring, and it was beautiful. Oh, honey, you'll see. You'll see the next spring, and the one after that, the one Johnny, you'll see. Johnny, you, you remember. No matter what happens to me, you have to wait for spring, too, Johnny. You have to wait. at the same time next week when the Golden Age of Television presents The Dark File. Ginger Rogers takes in a lonely immigrant with open arms and an open heart. The Leading Ladies of Entertainment presents Romance in Manhattan next. cared about was seeing the light of the next day, 